And moving down to the landing gear, starting with the nose wheel. It has a free castering nose wheel. Uh, so steering in this aircraft is through differential braking. And what that means is you have a brake on the left main and the right main. And as you apply a brake on one side, the nose wheel pivots and the plane will turn in that direction when you're on the ground. Uh, you can see that it's retractable gear, of course. That lets you reduce drag on the aircraft by getting the wheels up out of the airflow into the, either the wing or the fuselage. Um, critical if you're designing an aircraft for speed. It's a fairly simple system. Uh, the mechanism is through electrically actuated hydraulics and the gear is held up by hydraulic pressure. If you ever lose pressure, what that means is the gear will just naturally fall down. Emergency lowering is actually by eliminating the pressure and letting the gear fall by gravity. There is a dump valve right by the pilot's knee that lets you bleed the pressure in the system. As the gear fall, the nose wheel comes down and there's a gas charge strut that, that kicks that gear out. And once they're all down, they're held in place by over center links. It's a very simple, very reliable system. One of the things you'll notice is that there are very big gear doors. There's, there's one on this side and there's one closer to the center of the aircraft. Uh, these gear doors, when the wheels go up, these fully enclose the wheel wells. So once up, the surface underneath the wing is perfectly smooth. Again, it's one nod that uh, the legacy is given in the direction of speed. Moving on to the wing, this is one of the more beautiful aspects of this aircraft in my opinion. There's very few compromises in this airfoil uh, in terms of efficiently getting high speeds. So let's start at the wing route. You can see that there's no exposed bond between the wing and the fuselage. The route is one piece and bonded directly to the fuselage without any gaps. Uh, seamless and smooth, a lot like the entire aircraft actually, which is one of the advantages of working with composites, either fiberglass or carbon fiber. The wings do detach. There is a joint about four feet, three and a half, four feet out. You can see it here, it's sealed with uh, gap tape. Um, at this seam, the wings can actually be separated, so if you do need to transport your plane, you can take the wing tips off. So to get a little bit technical, this is a laminar flow, double tapered, leading edge, sheared wing tip wing. I'll show you a little bit about what that looks like. It's got a relatively small 25 and a half foot wingspan, which is quite a bit less than a Cessna 172, which is about 35, 36 feet. And it's really a lot smaller than a Cirrus, which has about a 40 foot wingspan. You can see if I move this way, one of the tapers to the leading edge. The outboard cord is narrower than the inboard cord. And the wing also tapers in thickness from here to here. So it gets thinner in both dimensions. Not only will you notice that the wingspan is a little bit shorter than most other certified aircraft, but you'll also see that the cord from the leading edge to the trailing edge is narrower than most other aircraft. That means that the wing area is actually relatively small on this plane, and so the wing loading will be much higher than your average Cessna, Piper, or other certified aircraft. Uh, high wing loading is not uncommon in higher performance aircraft. Um, essentially, planes that travel over 200, 250 knots um, have a higher wing loading typically, and it's just more efficient to have high cruise speeds when you have a high wing loading. High wing loading has some other effects, some good, some that take a little getting used to. Uh, subjectively, I've heard that uh, high wing loading aircraft have better handling in turbulence. Um, I tend to think that that's true. I feel turbulence a bit less in this plane than I have in others. Uh, it also means that you have an increased takeoff and landing speed, and it also changes your glide ratio, giving you a, a reduced glide ratio.